Yes, okay, so this video is on the transaction advisory questions, uh, important questions about the career in transaction advisory. Before that, we have also uploaded videos on resumes and stat audit questions. So you can check them out. Okay, and an important question uh, announcement that we are getting a lot of messages in LinkedIn or WebB or Instagram regarding interview questions. It is not possible to reply to each and every messages. We get 5,000, 6,000 messages. So if you are seeing this video, uh, please suggest your friends also to subscribe to this channel because all the questions will be given in this video, in this YouTube channel and also in the Telegram group as well. In the Telegram group we have created, so, in the, so if you are seeing this video, at least tell your friends also rather than messaging in LinkedIn or FB or Insta, it's better that you uh, subscribe the channel and the Telegram group so you will get all the questions whatever it is needed, okay? That will save your time as well as our time as well. Now, without wasting any time, let's get into transaction advisory. And by the way, this is made in the midnight only. Uh, five, four of PM. Okay, four of PM. Now, transaction advisory uh, basically is uh, two roles are ahead. One is financial due diligence, another is valuation. Let's talk about valuation. For valuation, normally they hire a CA or MBA finance also. Okay. For CA, the basically they want somebody who has a good stat audit exposure. So they will require somebody who has a good with financials. Okay. So you should be good with the financials knowledge or stock market knowledge. This is very much required. Okay. They basically hire a uh, somebody from a even from a rank holder or even a big four articles if that that will be definitely preferred over the others. Apart from that, for valuation, you should be very good with your financial modeling and in valuation courses. So you do them. So there are many like you can do it from CFI. Uh, there is uh, TWSs. There is so many areas where you can do at least do one courses from this. This ADU 91, the financial modeling and valuation. So you can refer those courses and you can do them. Okay, financial modeling and valuation without which it will be difficult to crack a valuation round interview. Uh, regarding this uh, finance uh, transaction advisory, so transaction advisory uh, or now, now the questions basically in asks in transaction advisory, so many candidates like they will give you an Excel sheet and after this Excel sheet they might ask you uh, they may ask you the sales register they might give you and let's say they would ask you to analyze the sales register whether the so you have to analyze those dummy sales register unstructured data you have to structure that data first with using excel knowledge so they will see your excel knowledge how you are using that unstructured data to structure it and apart from that they will check you how you will analyze those sales so uh, you have to check whether the whether sales are happening to a particular vendor or not or a particular geography or not you can use the pivot table and all to use those data flash fill function to structure those data a lot of functions in excel you have to use and you have to structure that excel data apart from that uh, apart from excel the second questions that they, they test excel data they test they will give you a case study okay so they might give you a case study on sales purchases they might ask you like a acquired a b company and they have hired a private equity firm the private equity is going to a big four for transaction advisory financial duty these some services now the a things that the sales might be wrong the audit report might not be correct so sales they have a they have a fictitious on the they have a suspicion on sales figure and the purchase figure as well so as a as a member of the transaction advisory firm what will you do how we what questions you will ask to the management to check the veracity of the sales what procedures you will apply how you do analyze the sales so here you have to apply your analytical skills as well not just the auditing skills but analytical skills so you will see the trained analysis so basically in the transaction advisory you do the trained analysis you will see the quality of earnings which is happening whether the sales uh, going down or up those things you have to check and apart from that related party transactions are happening or not customers those things so you can check this about sales purchases and employee benefit expenses so they might ask you in inventory is overstated fixed assets are is, is there or not so fixed they have a doubt on the fixed assets existence or also so the so each and every line items so it is basically like audit only but audit is more on a compliance uh, base uh, it is more on statutory compliance and transaction advisory is more on the analytical skills so they will see your analytical skills out here so each and every line item they may drill down whether you know it or not so if you are good with auditing skills 
and if you are also good with analytical skills okay and also it's very important that you have a good knowledge on stock market as well because if you have good knowledge on reading the financials annual reports and everything analytical skills will automatically develop so this can help you in transaction advisory to easily crack the interview i hope this short video is very useful it's only 5 to 6 minutes but the main thing i have to tell you excel is very important analytical skill is very very important and case study they might give you sales purchases employee benefit or fixed asset inventory is overstated how will what questions will you ask to the panel so you have to be very good with your questions so you have to be very good what questions you will you have to ask smart questions to the management so you have to make sure that what questions you will ask to the management uh, to check the sales or purchases or this okay so they want uh, in private in this transaction advisory is they actually want somebody who is very intellectually also very strong and have a good analytical skills if you have good analytical skills then you can definitely do well in the interviews apart from this the in the transaction advisory the work life balance is will will be little difficult because normally the deadlines are there in transaction advisories and also about transaction advisory valuation the the market is uh, the opportunities are little less compared to an audit field the opportunity is little less and there is also competition from some other field. like in valuation there is competition from mba finance in transaction advisory still the cas are required but the, the 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 roles are less the team size is small the roles are less so if you are really applying for this then you have to work also hard for the uh, long working hours okay and getting into an industry might be little difficult as per my i i am a knowledge getting into industry might be little difficult if you are in transaction advisory or valuation role because they hire accounting finance person from financial due diligence it might be easy for valuation might, might be little difficult to get into a industry later on but it is my opinion uh, you have to stick to a big four if you are in this transaction advisory or valuation you might have to stick to a big four for long term or yeah but yeah one benefit in transaction advisory you can get into a private equity firm later on if you are doing in transaction advisory you might get into a uh, private equity firm later on so it's a good profile but here you have to work for a long working hours you have to be ready for a long working hours and you have to be very good with your intellectual and analytical skills because you can't just uh, um, we, uh, like you can't just work long hours but your work has to be productive as well so both things are required long working hours as well as the productive because otherwise the private equity firm will not pay the big fours because they want to keep some output has to come from the data okay so i hope the this small video was useful uh, do like the channel and subscribe the channel and share with your friends if the information is useful thank you so much